What you just witnessed was a major leap by China, an ambitious test that marks a pivotal step in its lunar journey. This milestone signals China's growing resolve in the race to the moon, revealing a clear intent to challenge the U.S. and carve out a lasting presence beyond Earth. But what exactly was achieved, and how should SpaceX and the U.S. respond to this rising momentum? Let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Compared to the lunar race of the last century, today's competition for the moon is fiercer than ever made even more intense by China's emergence as a powerful new contender. With each bold step, China continues to close the gap, and its latest demonstration shows just how determined it is to match and perhaps surpass other spacefaring nations. At 12.30 a.m. Eastern on June 17th, which was 12.30 p.m. in Beijing, the China Manned Space Engineering Office carried out a critical test at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. Known as a pad, abort, or zero-altitude escape test, this demonstration involved Mengzhou, China's next-generation crewed spacecraft designed to carry astronauts not only into low-Earth orbit, but eventually to the moon. During the test, the Mengzhou capsule was mounted beneath an escape tower on the launch pad. Upon receiving the ignition command, the tower's solid rocket motors fired, thrusting the assembly skyward. Moments later, a second command flipped the capsule to the proper orientation, and at roughly 20 seconds into the flight, a secondary motor separated the escape tower from, a, from the crew vehicle. Immediately following separation, the capsule deployed its parachutes to begin a controlled descent through the atmosphere. Simultaneously, a protective cover beneath the vehicle opened, allowing its airbag system to inflate. Two minutes after ignition, Mengzhou touched down safely in a designated landing zone. The entire operation unfolded flawlessly, proving the escape system's ability to carry astronauts out of harm's way and bring them safely back to Earth. For those unfamiliar with Mengzhou, it is a dramatic leap forward for China's current Shenzhou spacecraft. Designed to carry up to seven astronauts in low Earth orbit, or fewer crew along with up to 500 kilograms of cargo, Mengzhou's lunar version will weigh around 26 metric tons and be capable of transporting three astronauts into lunar orbit. There, they will rendezvous with a separate lander for descent to the surface. According to China's planned lunar mission profile, two Long March 10 rockets will launch the mission components. One will carry the crewed Mengzhou spacecraft, the other will deliver the Lanyue lunar lander. Once in lunar orbit, the two vehicles will dock, allowing the astronauts to transfer to the lander. After completing surface operations, the crew will return to orbit aboard Lanyue, rejoin Mengzhou, and make the journey back to Earth. The pad abort test was essential to validating the spacecraft's safety systems. In an official statement, the Chinese Space Agency emphasized that escape and rescue capabilities are vital safeguards in human spaceflight. In case of launch pad emergencies, these systems are designed to pull astronauts out of danger and ensure a secure return. Officials explained that the test verified multiple critical functions, including the initiation of the escape sequence, separation of components, trajectory control, and the life support systems on board. They also gathered valuable flight data to confirm that real-world performance matched simulation models. The agency stated that this successful demonstration laid an important technical foundation for future lunar missions. Development of the Long March 10 and the Lanyue lander is reportedly progressing as scheduled, with more tests to follow as China advances toward its goal of landing humans on the moon around 2030. Unlike previous spacecraft, Mengzhou integrates both escape and life-saving systems within a single design. This marks a shift from the Zhenzhou philosophy, which relied more heavily on the rocket to provide escape thrust while the spacecraft managed survival. China's engineers describe Mengzhou as a foundational vehicle, one that will support the nation's space station, lunar exploration, and other human missions for years to come. Notably, this is only the second escape flight test in China's space history, 
The first took place 27 years ago with Shenzhou in 1998. That long gap underscores the significance of this latest milestone, especially given how closely it ties to China's lunar ambitions. More safety tests are scheduled later this year, including an in-flight abort scenario at maximum dynamic pressure, an especially demanding phase of ascent, when aerodynamic stress peaks. This upcoming test could occur either at Jiuquan or Wenchang on Hainan Island. If held at Wenchang, the mission might use a modified test vehicle or a Long March 5B, and the capsule would be recovered after splashdown. Meanwhile, development on the Long March 10 and Lanyue lander continues in parallel. Every subsystem must be perfected and integrated before China attempts a lunar landing mission by the end of the decade. What are your thoughts on China's accelerating progress in human spaceflight? Share your insights in the comments section down below, and if you enjoyed this update, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow SpaceX's and the world's journey to the moon and beyond. In addition to the recent crew safety test, China has quietly achieved another major milestone in support of its lunar ambitions. This time, the focus is on orbital servicing, a technology that could prove essential for future moon missions. China is currently conducting rendezvous and docking operations between two satellites in geostationary orbit, Shujian-21 and Shujian-25. Both are part of a broader effort to develop in-space servicing and refueling capabilities. Shujian-21 was launched in October of 2021, and Shujian-25 followed in January of 2025. Initially, the two satellites were positioned about 2 degrees apart in longitude, roughly 1,500 kilometers in orbital distance. Previously, Shujian-21 completed a notable mission by docking with the inactive Beidou-2 G2 navigation satellite and towing it into a graveyard orbit, a designated zone for retired satellites. Following that task, it appeared to drift passively, possibly due to depleted fuel reserves. However, in a surprising development, Shujian-21 recently reactivated its thrusters and began maneuvering towards Shujian-25. At the same time, Shujian-25 adjusted its own trajectory to approach Shujian-21. Their movement has been coordinated in a phased orbit, optimizing fuel efficiency during the rendezvous. As of one week ago, the two satellites were expected to meet on the 11th. While official confirmation has not yet been released, the event may have been monitored by U.S. surveillance satellites USA-270 and 271, part of the Geosynchronous Space Situational Awareness Program, or GSAP, which keeps track of activities in geostationary orbit. Once docked, Shujian-25 is expected to demonstrate advanced surfacing techniques such as fuel transfer and life extension support. These technologies could dramatically improve the sustainability of space operations by reducing long-term costs, minimizing satellite replacements, and limiting the growth of orbital debris. More importantly, these capabilities are directly relevant to future lunar exploration. The ability to dock and refuel in orbit is a key component of SpaceX's Starship program, particularly for deep space missions to the Moon and Mars. China's progress in this area signals that it too is building the infrastructure needed for long-duration multi-launch lunar campaigns. Although the maneuver may not have been part of the original plan, it nonetheless represents a vital step. It suggests that China is actively testing technologies that will play a crucial role in future lunar missions, quietly but with purpose. With China advancing rapidly in its lunar program, it is clear that the U.S., led by NASA and SpaceX, must take decisive moves to maintain leadership in the new space race. While the current U.S. roadmap still places it ahead of China in several key areas, China's accelerating pace and recent breakthroughs have added a new layer of urgency. Their progress raises a critical question. How quickly can they close the gap or even surpass us if the momentum continues? In response, both NASA and SpaceX must act swiftly and strategically. The window of advantage the U.S. currently holds will not remain open indefinitely. While our path remains solid on paper, the reality is that challenges lie ahead for both government and private sectors. And the stakes are now higher than ever. For NASA, the future is increasingly complicated. The SLS and Orion spacecraft, pillars of the Artemis program, are under intense scrutiny. These vehicles have been in development since the early 2010s, and despite more than a decade of work and tens of billions of dollars in investment, they have only completed one full mission, the Artemis 1 in 2022. While that mission was ultimately successful, it underscored the slow and costly nature of NASA's traditional approach. 
SLS in particular remains a fully expendable rocket, meaning none of its core components are recovered or reused, an outdated model in today's rapidly evolving launch industry. Meanwhile, Orion, designed to carry astronauts beyond low Earth orbit in a role similar to China's Mengzhou spacecraft, has faced persistent issues, especially with its heat shield. As of now, both SLS and Orion are being prepared for Artemis II, which is not scheduled to launch until 2026. That'll mark just the second flight of a system that has consumed more resources than nearly any other in modern NASA history. Adding to the uncertainty is the fact that both vehicles have been named in the White House's proposed budget cuts. Under this plan, SLS and Orion could be cancelled or drastically scaled back, making the Artemis program's future even more dependent on SpaceX. For some, especially critics of the ballooning costs and long delays, this may be welcome news, but for NASA, it represents a stark failure to deliver a sustainable long-term exploration strategy. Without its own reliable crewed launch capability for deep space, NASA must now place greater reliance on its commercial partners. That brings us to SpaceX. Although SpaceX has made historic strides in the past few years, especially with Starship, it is also beginning to face growing pains. Following a flurry of major milestones in 2023, including successful static fires, suborbital launches, and the early stages of orbital testing, the pace has slowed somewhat. Several critical capabilities that are essential to a successful moon mission have not yet been fully demonstrated. To date, Starship has not achieved a full mission profile involving orbit, payload deployment, deep space engine burns, successful reentry of both stages, or complete recovery. The in-space refueling system, vital for the Artemis III landing, is still in development, and the human landing system variant of Starship has yet to be publicly unveiled in its flight-ready form. Despite these hurdles, there are reasons for optimism. SpaceX has already demonstrated controlled landings of its Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla arms. A remarkable engineering feat, the company continues to build out its ground infrastructure with new launch towers, tank farms, and production facilities rapidly taking shape at Starbase. These developments will be essential to support a high flight rate, which in turn is crucial for data collection, iteration, and refinement of both Starship in its systems. NASA and SpaceX have made meaningful strides in lunar preparations. Airlock and elevator systems for Starship HLS have passed key tests, and newly released interior diagrams reveal how the spacecraft will support astronauts on the moon. Despite some delays, the mission architecture is steadily advancing. Artemis III remains on track for a potential 2027 launch. If SpaceX completes uncrewed demo landings beforehand, humanity's return to the moon could happen before the decade ends. Musk has even floated the possibility of a Mars mission in 2026, an ambitious goal that underscores SpaceX's deep space drive. Meanwhile, China continues its methodical progress, conducting complex orbital surfacing tests, paddleboard demonstrations, and steadily developing the Long March 10 rocket the Lanyue Lunar Lander, and the Mengzhou spacecraft. These efforts clearly show that China is serious and determined to compete head-to-head -head with the U.S. Their ability to execute highly coordinated technical tests with precision suggests that they are not just chasing the U.S. space program, but actively building a foundation to lead into the next phase of lunar exploration. And yet, confidence remains warranted. With organizations like NASA and companies like SpaceX at the helm, the U.S. is still on track to return astronauts to the moon before China. The path is not without obstacles, but American space leadership has always been defined by its resilience, innovation, and ability to overcome adversity. As long as momentum continues and strategic decisions are made wisely, the goal remains within reach. Indeed, the moon race has undeniably entered a new dramatic phase. China is making bold moves, but the United States, armed with experience, technological prowess, and a renewed spirit of collaboration between public and private sectors, is still in the lead. And if current efforts continue, it is not just possible but likely that America will once again plant its flag on the lunar surface before any other nation gets there. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay updated with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.